What's up you guys, this is John and welcome back to my channel, Restless Riches. In case you haven't heard, everyone's talking about this. There's videos everywhere about this $2,000 a month stimulus package, which sounds insane. So I'm gonna do a more in depth video on this tomorrow, but right now I'm just gonna do a quick reaction based on what I see on the web. So we've got on here, we already know about the CARES Act. I did a video about that earlier. Um, I got the stimulus check for that. You can check my previous video about it. Uh, hopefully you got yours too, because I have heard a lot of people still haven't gotten theirs. So hopefully it gets to you ASAP. So they're thinking this is not enough. We've got actually a couple different proposals on this stimulus check. Proposal number one, this is what everyone is talking about that's very interesting is $2,000 a month stimulus checks introduced by representatives Ro Khanna from California and Tim Ryan from Ohio. It's called the Emergency Money for the People Act, EMPA, EMPA, let's call it EMPA. So if passed, it's gonna provide more cash payments to Americans that are affected by, you know what? This would be for every American age 16 and up. Man, I could just imagine being a high school kid right now because most schools are closed so you don't have to go to school and you're gonna get 2,000 a month being paid not to go to school, that's insane. And they're gonna make it easier to receive. They recognize that not everyone has a bank or home address. So you're gonna be able to get this money not only through the direct deposit, check, or prepaid debit card, but also through online platforms such as Venmo, Zelle, or PayPal. Wow, the government's really getting with the times. This is phenomenal so far. So let's go through the eligibility, see if there's any loopholes here. All right, number one, you gotta be 16 or older, making less than $130,000 a year. Now that's like 90% of people. Married couples, you have to earn less than 260,000, okay? Qualifying families with children will receive an additional $500 per child, up to three children, 1,500. So I got two, that's an extra thousand right there. Having babies loses money, people say, but I don't know if he's gonna be, if this goes through $6,000 plus Chloe's 6,000, I think it pays to have kids and I could have one more. What do you think, honey? <laughs> All right, let me give you back to mommy. All right, let's keep going through this. So we've got those who had no earnings, were unemployed or are currently unemployed would also be eligible even if they didn't file a tax return, I find this too good to be true because the IRS, I'm sure, would not be happy with this. And those who are not eligible in 2018 or 2019, if they can submit two consecutive months of paychecks, they can be eligible for 2020. So this just sounds phenomenal. As you can learn more about this on Representative Kana's website. So check that out for the details. Proposal number one. I'm all for it, you got my vote, that's fantastic. So let's go to proposal number two. This would cancel rent and mortgage payments throughout this uh, emergency time period. Introduced by Representative Ilan Omar, and this is called the Rent and Mortgage Cancellation Act. This would call for nationwide cancellation of rents and home mortgage payments through the duration of this epidemic up to one year. So, I mean, I, I saw Florida already started opening up beaches and we're talking about a whole other year. So this would include full rent payment forgiveness for your primary residence, full mortgage payment forgiveness for your primary residence, no accumulation of debt for renters or homeowners, no negative impact on your credit rating or rental history. It would establish a relief fund for landlords and mortgage holders to cover losses and it would create an optional fund to finance the purchase of private rental properties to increase the availability of affordable housing. Wow, 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 wow. On top of that, it's gonna be retroactive to March 13th, 2020, and will last for one year and could be extended. So this is, I mean, renters and homeowners who made payments during April 2020 would be reimbursed for their payments. This makes me just want to buy a house right now. I mean, this morning I had a showing, it had 15 offers on it and all were full price or above. I mean, it was a well-priced property, but 15 offers in this epidemic, maybe they got news about this. And that's why, because if I didn't have to pay mortgage for a year, I would just go out and buy something right now because it'd just be free for a year. 
And that would give me plenty of time to build up uh, the ability to pay after that year, especially if I'm receiving from the other proposal 2000 plus. What a country. It says there's no double dipping allowed. It would only allow taxpayers to receive the coverage for your primary residence. So that wouldn't cover second homes, vacation homes, or other non-primary residences. Fair enough. And those who have had both a mortgage and also rent a home would have to choose the home that they want to receive financial relief for. I mean, fair enough. You know, if you have multiple properties, to give you more than one property, I think that would be a little over the top. So I, I think that's a very fair restriction right there. So let's see, landlords and mortgage companies would be covered through a fund managed through HUD, the Department of Housing and Urban Development. So this relief fund would be for lenders and landlords to cover the lost rental and mortgage payments they would have received. I mean, that's fair. So to receive these funds, lenders and landlords would be required to follow federal guidelines for fair lending and renting practices for five years. Okay, so there's a little bit of a restriction there, but I mean, federal guidelines shouldn't be too restrictive. I, I think they should be pretty much following that anyway. Okay, so this one you can read more on Representative Omar's website. So there you have it. That's my quick reaction to all the talk about this new stimulus package. Uh, I'm gonna do some more research and come up with a more in-depth video for you guys tomorrow. Until then, it sounds incredible. I'm just wondering if there's more like restrictions or loopholes or some negative things that are not being advertised. And also, what is the actual likelihood of this being passed? This has got to add a big chunk to our national debt. What would it cost to pay everyone $2,000 a month for a year? Especially when we're not getting the tax revenue because this would be untaxed money. So this sounds great, but as with everything that sounds great in terms of giving money, where's that money going to come from? and what are gonna be the consequences of that, i.e. inflation. So we'll get more into the specifics and details tomorrow. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't liked this video or subscribed yet, make sure to do that, and I'll see you on the next one.